You know, once upon a time, $140 would not get you a lot in terms of a functional Android tablet, but apparently now, it can actually go quite far. In today's video, we're going to unbox one such device. This is the, I'm going to go with Oscal. I think this is by a company called Blackview, the Pad 10. This is, I believe, a 10-inch, uh, as the name would indicate, a 10-inch Android tablet, and it should be retailing right around $140. At time of filming, I do not yet have a final price. They tell me around $140. So like I said, we're going to unbox this thing, give some impressions, and maybe we could call this a review. Maybe we'll do a time jump of some sort since I've got time between now and release to uh, do like a full review. Oscal, powered by Android 12, that's not so bad, right? A T606 octa-core 1.6 gigahertz processor, we'll need to look into what that is. 6580 milliamp hour battery, that's not too bad. 10.1 inch, 1200 by 1920 full HD plus IPS panel, eight megapixel uh, uh, selfie camera, and then a 13 megapixel on the rear, eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of RAW. So that's not so bad all across the board, seems okay. We need to know what that processor is there because obviously it's not like a Snapdragon or something uh, like that. We're looking at probably something a little bit uh, lower end. All that being said though, let's actually crack this thing open and see what we look like. Again, $140. It's pretty inexpensive, right? So first thing, that's pretty cool. We have a very large uh, screen protector there. Not pre-installed, but you can put it on there if you want. I guess I'll have to decide if I want to do that or not. Flip this thing around. Oscal Pad 10. We've, I believe, read all of this stuff off already. I like that color, right? This, these are colors I use on my channel all the time, so that's pretty neat. Let's uh, set the tab aside. That's relatively heavy, not too bad. Uh, USB-A to C cable, a charging brick. My God, what a concept, a charging brick for your device right there in the box. Five volts by 10 amps, that should be a 10 watt charger. And unfortunately it is uh, not one I can use because I live in the United States. But I mean, you know, look, they tried. All right, let's peel this uh, plastic off of here. Where am I meant to grab this at? I guess nowhere. Oh, there was a tab right there. I just didn't see it. I'm dumb. Okay, so I mean, you know, at first glance, this back here, that does feel okay. Definitely not going to show any fingerprints, so that is cool. Great big sticker back here on the back. Can I take that off? I hate that. Stop putting stickers on your devices, okay? Laptops, any of these things, don't, don't put stickers on them. You know, they look so much better without that, right? That's like, how much better is that? There's still some residue on there. I'll get it off, whatever. That looks 10 times better, though. On the front, we have a different thing to peel. And, you know, those are some relatively sizable bezels, but I really actually don't think that they're that bad. And you know what else? There's already a screen protector installed on this. Let's even get my camera to focus up very close. And, uh, yeah, can you see that maybe? Yeah, there's already definitely a screen protector installed. So they just gave us another screen protector. I think it said, I think maybe this is a soft screen protector and that one felt more rigid. So that is pretty cool. I like the edge here of this camera bump. It's like, it's like ritzy looking, right? It's uh, nice and shiny and so forth. That's pretty good. So what do we have here? Probably power, volume rocker, USB-C port. Uh, this is a SIM tray. Does this thing have a radio in it for data? Or is this maybe this is an SD card, perhaps? Probably going to be an SD card. I see one speaker grill there and one speaker grill there. So probably stereo speakers. Um, let's pop this out really quickly and see if we can determine... So that looks like a SIM and an SD card slot. It looks like a combo slot, doesn't it? All right, let's try and power this bad boy up. Hold down the power button. And I've just noticed something. There is a bubble. There is a hair. You probably can't see this. Under the screen protector, all is lost. That's going to have to come off now. The vibration motor, when I turned that thing on, it was probably audible. It was very, very loud. A lot of these more, you know, budget devices end up having like very cheap and loud vibration motors. This seems to be one of those. All right, let's run through the setup very, very quickly, and then we'll jump back. I mean, look, there you go. We were wondering if this thing had mobile data capabilities, and yeah, it evidently does. So we're loaded into Android here, all set up, and yes, this does appear to be Android 12, but they've definitely put a skin on this, so it doesn't necessarily look just like Android 12. Definitely getting some lagginess here uh, at this particular moment. And there is some pre-installed stuff, right? Asphalt, Nitro, Majestic, Quest, several different games that have sort of come pre-installed on here. Now, bear in mind, it is lagging a bit, but we are still 
doing potentially some stuff in the background here as things fully set up. So we'll need to withhold performance judgment here uh, for just a little while longer. Speaking of performance though, I did Google this and it is a Unisoc T606. That is the system on a chip that we are running. And this thing was announced all the way back at the end of 2019, right? So that thing is not necessarily the newest processor in the world. And we're gonna run a Geekbench real quick and see what our score is as well. So the Geekbench score is not great. I mean, to put it in context, something like a Z Fold 4, like a modern flagship is scoring somewhere around 1300 for single core and somewhere near 4,000 for the multi-core score. Now keep in mind, this is a you know roughly $140 device. So we were never gonna get anywhere near that. We're gonna have to see how this actually performs in real life to determine, you know, because a synthetic benchmark does not tell you the entire story. One thing I know that I need to do is I need to lower the brightness because it is blowing my camera out something fierce. And it's just, honestly, it's really bright in person. Uh, in and of itself. Let's jump into these settings here and see what this looks like. And maybe we can scroll down here to about tablet and confirm that yes, this is running Android 12 and it is running something they're calling Doak OS, which is, I guess, their, their name for their skin of Android. It is sort of almost like an iPad looking uh, setup as far as this interface goes. Very iOS-ish. Looks like they're actually using some memory expansion here. So it's using storage like a, uh, what would you call it, like a RAM disk back in the day. This may or may not be good. If you've got fast internal storage, that can be okay. If you don't, that can be actually uh, quite quite a, a bad thing to do. We'll have to see how that pans out as well. Let's check out these speakers. Let's go into YouTube. And I'm looking for one of my own videos, but it doesn't appear to be showing up. I just posted one, but whatever. We'll, we'll use this one from eight hours ago. Let's see what this sounds like. On the Google Pixel devices are always every single year among the best cameras. Honestly, that's not that bad. Now, you know, granted, that's just me talking, so it's hard to tell from that alone, but that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Let's install a music player and check out some actual music. So for this, I'm disabling my noise filtering uh, for my microphone. So this is going to be much more clean than what I just let you hear, and I think probably more useful as well. Let's play song at max volume. <laughs> So the last budget tablet I tested, the speaker sounded so much worse than that that it's not even funny. Like that is, that's actually not too bad. They're not as loud as I would like for them to be, but in terms of just the audio quality, that is not too bad. Let's take a look at the camera app now. Let's, uh, I don't know why the camera app needs to make phone calls, but whatever, we'll just let it do what it needs to do. Uh, we're not really focusing there. Let's see, I guess I've kind of focused now. And there's a shot for that. Let's flip it around to the selfie camera and we'll take a selfie. And I have to admit, I, I'm probably, you know, I'm not really expecting a whole lot here in terms of how these photos are going to look, but let's take a look anyways. Who's taking photos with their tablet, right? I mean, you know, not great like lighting and so forth, but it's, it's a photo on a tablet. The selfie camera, I mean, I think that the under display camera on the Z Fold actually is considerably better than this. So again, maybe for like a, a video call or something like that, you're going to be okay. But for much more than that, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a camera on a cheap tablet. Let's dive back into these settings again here because there's at least one thing that I want to be able to, to change here. Um, let's go under display. Can we turn on dark mode? See, how does this look? That's so much better. Enhance, moderate, and gentle. What does that mean? Well, that's interesting. So there's like different kinds of dark mode. We're gonna go with enhance because that's like a, like a total blackout. Under sound, we're gonna go ahead and turn off touch vibration altogether. It's really, really bad. I mean, this so far, that's the worst part of this thing is the vibration motor is just really, really awful. In the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty good thing to be bad at. There's actually some good stuff here. We have lift to wake, which is something I'm surprised to see on a cheaper tablet. We have some gestures here, like three fingers to take a screenshot or something like that. Like they've actually got a decent amount of stuff built into their skin here of Android, more than you would expect. What is this, PC mode? No way, no way. There's no way this thing has a desktop mode on the tablet. Holy mackerel, we have, <laughs> what? Y'all, 
this thing just took a major step up in in my opinion. Look at that! What? Can we drag it to the side and make it like snap or anything? No. Okay, what about resizing it? Look at that. Guys, we have a desktop mode. What's down here? So there's a search button, which is I guess searching your apps maybe? Yep, looks like it's just searching. Oh, there's also a web search built in. That was just holding the thing way off the screen. So you can search your apps or your um, or or the web itself. That's pretty cool. Uh, you got a little pop-up there for your quick settings, like this is a proper desktop. You have um, notifications there. Battery, which just loaded that up. That's pretty cool. It's got a nice little animation for your battery level as well. Let's close that out. Click on the time. It opens up their clock app. And then what is this down? Oh, okay. So there's a home, a multitasking, and a back button over there in the corner. This is like a proper solid desktop mode, guys. Okay, so I've taken some time and I've customized this thing a bit to my liking. We've installed the Microsoft Launcher and I've got things set up. I just like this better than the launcher that it comes with. A little bit more feature rich, a little bit more customization that can be done there. And everything's running relatively smoothly. Now, something terrible did happen while I was doing this. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now, this is a screenshot, but I got a notification here. A system message. Snowflake at Christmas is a letter from winter. Don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it is a system message. And typically you can just disable notifications, but I could not disable that particular notification. So uh, you're just gonna get weird little notifications like this, I guess, from time to time. Don't really know what to make of that, but something that I felt like I should definitely point out. Now, I think I have a couple of games installed on here, like Minecraft, that we're going to jump into. Not going to do an extensive gaming test, but we will do enough to kind of give you a general idea. Like, if you wanted to play something simple, basic on this thing, is it something you were going to be able to do very well? Let's jump in and find out quickly. So we are now loading into this level. I'll give you an idea about how long it takes to actually load in, because that is definitely a part of a performance test like this. How quickly do you actually get into the level? So no jumps, no skips here. We're just gonna watch it build the terrain and actually load in. We say done, we're loading, loading. Let's go. Okay, so that was not too terribly bad. Now, these settings are just whatever they came as. So the first thing I wanna do here is let's see how responsive that is. And the answer is not responsive at all. There is a tremendous amount of lag between looking around and actually something happening on the screen. So I don't know what to make of that. Something just, did that turtle just attack me? Oh, uh, there's some sort of dragon, I think, attacking me. Sorry, turtle, I should have never tried to blame you. This would be unplayable. Um, the amount of latency, the amount of, of delay between an action and something happening. How do I jump? There it is. So the buttons aren't bad. But the looking around is absolutely abysmal. So maybe if you paired a controller or something like that, this would be okay. Not sure what's going on here. Never actually seen that before. Um, weird. Let's go into PUBG Mobile and see if it's any better. And since that was super duper mega awkward to hold it, we're just going to zoom in a bit. And we're just going to lay it down on the, on the desk here and see what we can do. Okay, so that loading took an extremely low oh, we're not actually done i'm sorry well we'll continue okay i think we're finally to the point of being able to do something and i have logged in to this earlier so i haven't like that took legitimately like four minutes or something like that to get into the menu so maybe there was like an update or something so what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna make you sit through this but i'm going to actually close this out and i'm gonna open it again and just see like it, it, it can't possibly be that long to normally load into this game i know this is not a particularly fast device and i know that you know the system on a chip is a bit slow the storage is probably a bit slow but that seemed to be unbelievable so we're, we're going to do this again okay nope definitely not caused by an update if you're going to play PUBG mobile you're going to have to give yourself at least like two or three minutes just to load into the main menu. So now we're going to try and actually launch a game. Can I get rid of all this stuff? Great. Okay. No, I don't want to do any of this. Okay. So one player classic. We're going to match make and let's see what this thing is actually capable of uh, in terms of running the game. 
And before we get into it, we are on whatever the settings are that it comes with. It should do some work to kind of give you settings that are going to make sense. Hopefully that has happened and this thing will uh, hopefully run better than Minecraft did. So we are in the uh, pre-match lobby. What on earth is that floating through the air? My goodness. Okay, so one thing I can tell you is that the responsiveness of looking around is strangely about the same. Like if I move slowly, it's really low frame rate. There's something weird about swiping on this screen. So like it's similar to Minecraft. It seems to be running at an okay frame rate. But there's like a delay, like when I swipe to, to aim to look, there's a really huge delay. I don't know what's going on with that, what is causing that to be happening, but that that alone is going to make this game, you know, while it is running fine, otherwise that's going to make this game absolutely impossible to play. We're going to go ahead and jump as soon as I'm able to, which I actually, I don't see a button to jump. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> oh, I don't play mobile games. Let's go ahead and jump and let's get on the ground and just see what happens on the ground. This is very odd because I've used, in theory, less powerful devices that have ran these games fine. I should say fine being a relative term. Fine in the grand scheme of things. They're playable. But they didn't have this sort of delay in the looking around. And unless there's a, an obvious solution to that, like I said, that would make gaming in terms of like, you know, three dimensional games, pretty much impossible. At least for me, it's not something I'm going to get used to. So let's just start running. And as you can see, the frame rate's fine. The delay is not as bad as it was in Minecraft. I would say this is, this is close. But man, that would be really hard for me to get used to. I, I don't know what to make of this. Maybe there is like a system setting somewhere that needs to be turned off that's causing some kind of weird problem. I don't know, but it's not something I'm going to dig into. I'm just going to tell you what I'm seeing right here, right now. And for me, unless you're playing solitaire, some basic stuff like that, 3D games like this, where you're looking around and aiming, not going to be something you're going to be playing on this device, at least based on the two that I have now tested. Okay, so what does all of that mean for this device. I've actually been using it now off and on for a couple of weeks as just my little couch, tablet, and so forth. And basically, here's what I think. It is a decent tablet. For $140, it's about as good as you could reasonably expect. Very low-end light games are going to be okay. You're not going to be doing some like intense 3D gaming on this thing though. But in terms of like normal stuff, right? Watching YouTube, watching Netflix, scrolling through social media, stuff you're going to do on a $140 tablet, it is pretty decent. Now there are some slowdowns, some sluggishness here and there because this is not a particularly fast system on a chip. But again, it's $140. You can't really complain. The build quality is solid. It feels good with the Microsoft launcher, which is my launcher of choice installed on there. It's running just fine. I like the PC mode, right? That's a cool thing. And they do in fact sell some decent accessories for this thing, like this keyboard that you can see there. This is actually the listing that finally is now available. This is on AliExpress and you're looking at, like I said earlier, $139.99. Having the SIM tray is there to be able to, you know, pop your SIM in and use it over a network. You can get a case with a keyboard for $25. I wish they had sent me that too. I would love to have tested that as well, but unfortunately, I don't have that. Look, for a low-end tablet, like I said, it's a pretty solid device. I'll drop a link to the AliExpress listing down below. Shout out to the guys over at Oscal or Blackview, whatever, in fact, their name is. I can't actually tell what the official name is, Oscal tab, but apparently Blackview is who I was communicating with. It's all very, very confusing. Thanks for sending the tablet out so far ahead so that I could get some good testing in before posting this review. Hit that subscribe button down below to not miss out on more content like this. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.